Hi there, this is Dr. Maria Helt, herbalist and microbiologist here for Basmati.com. This week I'm going to jump back into wild medicinal mushrooms and I'm going to talk about a great mushroom called hawkswing. Sarcodon is the genus name and this is going to be maybe pretty hard to see. <laughs> this is a dried up one from last season. So maybe not the best representation of the mushroom, but it's got a traditional or a standard mushroom stalk and a cap. Not all mushrooms have that. Some, for instance, look like soccer balls. And let's see, that's the top is kind of scaly. This is a little darker than the mushroom would appear fresh in the woods because, again, it's been sitting in a box in my closet. And this is an interesting mushroom uh, because it's hard for me to line up with the camera here. Because instead of gills or pores or little holes, it has teeth. And I want to see if I can get you a better shot of that. I have one sitting around here. Oh, I had a little piece to show you, but let me see if I can just get that a little closer to the camera. Uh, can you see those little projections sticking off there? Uh, here, those are little teeth, and they're all breaking off all over my computer at the moment because this mushroom's traveled around a bit as I've taught. And so that is where the mushroom spores come out of, where the mushroom reproduces. Whereas in, say, your grocery store button mushroom, if you flip it upside down, or a portobello, better yet, you'll see the gills underneath, and that's where the spores come out in, in those mushrooms. And so sarcodon, the botanical name, sarco means flesh, and odon means teeth and so the name of the mushroom even reflects its appearance and it's it's a really beautiful mushroom it's not a super colorful one the way that say fly agaric and amanita muscaria is but it's gorgeous it looks like a hawkswing like its common name it looks like it almost has, has feathers on it and so this mushroom grows in a lot of temperate parts of the world. They're very plentiful here in the Rocky Mountains where I live. So I can find lots of these when I go out during our summer monsoon season here. And it is an edible mushroom. Now, some mushroom books say it tastes good. That has not been my experience. In my experience, it tastes like shoe leather. And even when I try cooking it with butter or vermouth or some of my other favorite accoutrements to cook mushrooms with, it tastes like shoe leather with butter and vermouth and other spices on it. Now, some people focus mostly on the young fruiting bodies, the young mushrooms to eat, and those supposedly taste less bitter. They just taste like young shoe leather. Uh, you, you might have a different experience if you're used to eating this mushroom. And in fact, I have friends who think it tastes good. And it's just, uh, we're all a little bit different. Right, and so uh, it is edible though, and it's actually quite nutrient rich. It has a lot of magnesium in it, and zinc, and iron, and it is valued in many parts of the world as a food. Um, I tend, because I don't think it tastes that good, I tend to stick with it as a medicine. So here is a double extract that I've made of hawkswing mushroom, meaning that I made an alcohol extract over several weeks and combine that with a water extract that I boiled for several hours. And the goal of that is just to try to get as many of the chemicals out of the mushroom as possible. Um, and so this has traditionally been used uh, in parts of the world like China, for instance, for heart support. And so lab studies actually show that this mushroom acts like an ACE inhibitor. And ACE inhibitors are pretty commonly used blood pressure medications. Now the mushroom's not gonna be as strong as a pharmaceutical drug, but it probably also won't have as many side effects either. Uh, but I wouldn't just stop your heart med and start taking a mushroom. You wanna work with somebody if you're gonna do something like that. Reishi, for instance, is a, another mushroom that also is an ACE inhibitor. There are a lot of them, and there are actually a lot of herbs that are as well. But you just wanna be careful. It's not something you wanna just start necessarily playing with on your own if you're currently being treated. Again, see a practitioner who can then work together with your doctor for that. Um, now, uh, also uh, in China, this mushroom has traditionally been used for circulatory support, and indeed, it does have benefits on cholesterol in our vasculature. Now, keep in mind that cholesterol accumulates in our arteries because of inflammatory damage to the walls of those blood vessels and to oxidative damage or free radical damage. And so the cholesterol is acting like a Band-Aid. And so possibly what the mushroom is doing is because it reduces inflammation, maybe it's reducing damage in the blood vessels. And so cholesterol levels don't have to go up 
trying to act like a band-aid fixing that damage. Now, another traditional use that comes out of China is its use as a muscle relaxer. And so if you are one of those people whose stress manifests in your shoulders like me, it might be a fun one to play around with and try out for that. Now, I mentioned inflammation, and so uh, studies do find that this mushroom reduces inflammation. And so inflammation is mediated by the immune system, but at the same time, it's also able to stimulate an immune response, kind of like echinacea does. Uh, and so this mushroom, for instance, will induce white blood cell uh, production, which can help us fight infections. And so there is... Um, good use for immune system related stuff and the sun is starting to come in a little bit more brightly in my window so half of my face is getting washed out oh well uh, <laughs> this is not a high quality video as you can see anyway uh this mushroom is also antimicrobial and so at least in a dish lab studies find that uh, extracts whether water or alcohol of hawk's wing are active against a whole variety of bacteria and so maybe a useful topical wash for infection, play around with it for internal infection, but it's never clear how those sort of dish and test tube experiments really uh, translate to what's going on in the body. And along those lines, like many mushrooms, hawk's wings can kill cancer cells in a dish. And these are, I've killed millions and millions, probably billions of cancer cells in a dish back in my years as a research science. And again, it's an important first step in evaluating the anti-tumor activity of something, but it's relevance to what's going on in the body. You know, not clear at this point, but it's hopeful. So it does kill cancer cells in a dish. And something that's really interesting to me as a former cancer researcher is that uh, there is a component of the mushroom extract that inhibits an enzyme known as telomerase. And telomerase is involved in aging or in slowing aging, but it can also be involved in cancer growth when it's upregulated. And so uh, some part of this mushroom extract actually can inhibit that enzyme. And that may mean nothing to a lot of you, but for any of you who maybe have a background in, in tumor biology and such, uh, that might have some meaning to you. Now, this has actually been tested as a water extract in an animal model of cancer, and I'm not a big fan of animal studies, uh, but suffice it to say that in rodent studies, uh, the water extract significantly inhibited tumor growth. Uh, and so again, that, that is hopeful, but, but I'm not aware of any clinical studies, unfortunately, going on in the US that are looking at this mushroom with respect to that. Uh, see if there's anything else I want to talk about. I think I'll wrap it up there. Um, that's more than enough that you probably ever thought you would know about Hawkswing. Uh, but it's a great mushroom. Go look it up online. There are a lot of really good mushrooming websites. And uh, the odds aren't too bad unless you live out in the desert or in the Arctic that you might have this mushroom growing nearby to you in the woods. And just one last thing before I shut up and sign off. Before going out and harvesting wild mushrooms, you really need to know what you're doing. You need to know what the really toxic species are in your area. So meet somebody that goes out and leads foraging expeditions. That's a great way to learn mushrooming. Um, get some books, go to classes, etc. And with that, I am going to sign off and wish you all good health and have a lovely week until I blab at you next time. Take care.